Hi, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to KubeCon again. Uh, I saw some of you in the morning session. Um, so some of it is going to be it's going to be of uh, repetitive in nature. Um, just to introduce ourselves, uh, a few of the maintainers of the project Litmus Chaos are here. I'm Uma Mukara. Uh, we have Kartek and Udit. Uh, all of us are uh, been with the product, project from the beginning for about last five years, so happy to answer any of the questions that you may have. And we also have an end user of uh, the project, uh, Syam Patak, director at uh, CIVO, and uh, he's also a CNCF ambassador. So we have about uh, 30 minutes, and then we will take uh, you know, Q&A in the last five minutes. But um, for those of you who are new to Litmus, probably I'll uh, rush through the first five minutes on uh, what Litmus is and why Litmus. And then Karthik is going to uh, talk through about uh, how uh, the journey has been for us um, and then what's, uh, what you can expect uh, the rest of the year uh, from the project. And also, the, uh, you know, how can you contribute? Um, we're obviously interested in working with the community and taking more contributions. So, you know, how can you contribute if you're interested in contributing, right? And then uh, uh, Simon will do a quick demo of it. So outages are expensive. Business reliability, service reliability is very critical uh, to business. You don't want to get into uh, the irreparable damages uh, that are caused by outages, right? And uh, even though your systems are always thought to be built for uh, reliability, you're building redundancy in your systems, um, failures are inevitable, right? And failures will happen. Uh, if not frequent, it's only a matter of how often they often happen rather than you know, whether they happen or not, right? So how do you really avoid service downtimes? That's the bigger uh, question uh, that we need to ask as we move towards um, you know, Kubernetes-based uh, microservices deployments, right? So as part of this, we, all, we have seen uh, importance of the following metrics uh, continuously being, uh, you know, talk more and more uh, in the business discussions. You know, how fast you can recover from your outages and how uh, can you avoid these outages or how can you increase the distance between these uh, failures or outages, right? So the answer to that is uh, adopt chaos engineering uh, from beginning and uh, as much as possible in your all phases of uh, uh, DevOps or cloud native DevOps. And also chaos engineering uh, is not a magic bullet. Uh, it's a step-by-step -step method to build a kind of a culture into your DevOps practices. Right? You always start with a few small chaos tests and then incrementally start building uh, you know, over a period of time, automate them, et cetera, et cetera. And why is this more important in the cloud native world? That's because you have more dynamism, you have more containers to deal with, and your view of your code is much, much smaller. There are so many things that are changing outside your code, so you want to be able to test how my code works when something else fails, right? So that's very, very important. And this code always keeps changing faster and faster, right? So uh, all of us are trying to see how can I increase my ship time, right? So that, that's one thing that continuously is happening. So together with more number of microservices and the faster shipment, you have a situation where there is so much dynamism and you don't know how to take care of uh, or how to ensure reliability. So chaos engineering definitely will, will help there. So chaos engineering, think of this as a DevOps culture. Uh, it's no one's responsibility. Anybody can start. You can do move uh, left or right. But important thing is that someone has to start uh, doing chaos experiments in the entire DevOps and then start training others, right? So that's, that's what is important. And Litmus helps you do that. Litmus uh, is a project which is going to provide you a full platform uh, to manage and orchestrate your chaos experiments across your team members in the entire DevOps, right? So it's got um, a centralized uh, portal or control plane where developers, SREs, and QA members, even your management can come and see what's going on with respect to reliability in your DevOps 
and uh, you can take actually some control on building resilience into your system, right? And it uh, is a Kubernetes app. It works for non-Kubernetes targets also, right? And you can uh, actually execute chaos experiment across uh, various cloud platforms as well. How do you get started with Litmus? It's pretty simple. It's a Helm chart. Um, you can actually uh, deploy it on any Kubernetes. Uh, it takes minimal resources. Uh, being a Kubernetes app, you can extend it as you grow uh, with chaos. Or we also have uh, you know, a hosted control plane, um, you know, litmuschaos.cloud, uh, just to get tested and then keep going, right? So you basically start with a simple installation, uh, either by Helm or signing up. And then uh, you start connecting your actual targets through Litmus agents uh, to your control plane, and then start creating your chaos tests. Litmus uh, gives you a set of experiments already, about 50 plus experiments, and it gives you a good SDK, uh, API. You can be very creative uh, you know, once you uh, get a hang of it. And then you can start running chaos experiments and start running analytics, seeing how reliability is improving uh, across um, across uh, uh, your CA pipelines or CD pipelines. So we got a bunch of experiments. Um, I, I think you can go to hub.litmuschaos.io and then uh, start seeing it. And this is one area where we've been uh, you know, seeking um, uh, more contributions, right? So as you learn um, chaos and as you, uh, you know, experiment with chaos, you get better ideas, you can upstream them for the community to get used. So chaos experiments are stitched into chaos workflows, and chaos workflows is, is nothing but your, your chaos test, right? So you can actually, uh, once you build chaos tests, you can schedule them, or you can put them into your GitOps, right? So as you deploy your deployments, chaos can be triggered automatically, or you can inject them into CR, CD pipeline, or you can just ask your developers, hey, no, I have some chaos tests you can run yourself, right? And you know, just uh, do it the cloud native way or kubectl way. So it's, it's a, a very stable and um, you know, a reliable project. Uh, we've been uh, seeing people using it for the last few years um, in an enterprise way. So it's got a full list of features that you can go and you know, learn more about. But uh, the next thing is you know, like Karthik and other maintainers are going to actually talk about what has evolved in the last few years and what you can expect uh, in the year and you know, going forward. So with that, I will invite uh, you know, Karthik uh, to take us through the next few minutes. A maintenance session, you might all be interested in learning about how the Litmus journey started and what were the decisions we made along the way in building a cloud-native chaos engineering platform. So I'll just uh, take you through that. So we built Litmus. Uh, basically in response to a need to test the resilience of a SaaS platform that we were internally building. And um, we wanted, that was Kubernetes based. So we wanted to go ahead with a chaos engineering platform that helped us to do chaos on a Kubernetes based SaaS platform and do it uh, in a Kubernetes native way. There's a lot of Kubernetes being thrown in here. What do we mean by that? So people are used to running operations on Kubernetes clusters in a certain way. Everything is declarative, everything is a resource, and the resource is reconciled. When most of your application lifecycle management, security policies, and so much else is being done, in that way you would also expect, you would also need the resilience tests to be uh, done in the same way, sort of homogenize the way you do chaos experimentation resiliency tests. And the platforms that were available at that point of time, uh, the chaos uh, tools, were not meeting that purpose. That's when we went ahead and uh, wrote Litmus. The idea was to keep it um, open source and community collaborated because that's how people really use their, um, um, th that brings in a lot of rich libraries. You could use that to create faults of different types because everyone has their own idea of what a fault should be. And then we went ahead and um, made it a plugin-based chaos platform. That is, you could bring your own experiments. That's what you see on the right side. You could just get your own fault business logic, containerize it, run it as a Kubernetes job, instrument it a little bit, and then it will be orchestrated as part of the platform. That makes it easy and standardized for all people to come and write their own faults. 
So the initial deliverable there was uh, creating chaos uh, experiments as custom resources. You had an operator to carry out the business logic defined within those custom resources. We put all those uh, experiments as part of a hub, and BYOC is just bring your own chaos. Just keep expanding the hub. That's what we had initially. And then over a period of time, we got some feedback on how we should improve. Um, people needed a way to centrally manage their uh, chaos on their cluster fleet, not go on individually, track chaos experiments in each cluster, have it all visible from one platform. And they wanted to do complex scenarios. OK, one fault is great, but most of the time, you have complex scenarios in your environment. Things are getting built up over a period of time in production. So you're really interested in doing chaos workflows, not just single faults. Workflows are a sequence of faults strung together in different order that you need. And then you have the ability to collaborate with your team members on the workflows that you created, store it in a Git repository, have a single source of truth, and add observability features here. We are talking about the ability to set certain constraints around what should happen when your fault is injected, be able to validate this is how your application behaved during the fault injection. So add, uh, we added those features. And then we also added some features around automation. When do you want your chaos to be injected? At what point? Maybe after an application got upgraded as part of some deployment by a pipeline or by some um, GitOps controller like Argo CD or Flux. So that's the observability, the automation, the teaming, and the user collaboration features, and then the workflows. These were the major uh, additions that we made. And all of them uh, from one centralized control plane into which you can correct different clusters that are the target environments for chaos. So that's the evolution. And we've, we've sort of ended up with this. There's a chaos control plane, which is where the users come in and say what they want to do as part of their experiments, create their workflows, manage it, collaborate with their team members. And on the right-hand side, you have the execution environment where the chaos actually happens. And uh, we've got uh, metrics uh, that you can use to instrument your own observability dashboards to say, this is how um, the application is behaving when a particular experiment is running. So at this point, I'll probably um, just summarize what I just said. The original principles, you saw that in the first slide. The ones, they are the ones on the right-hand side of the screen. And on the left-hand side, we added certain observability capabilities with probes and exporters and things like that, and added the ability to run workflows, schedule them, integrate them with your GitOps flow, et cetera. So this is sort of broadly the framework for cloud-native chaos engineering at this point that uh, Litmus sort of defined. And this has found some resonance within the community. Uh, I'll probably let Uma talk through some of the use cases, the way it's being used most commonly. And uh, I think we'll go back and speak about the roadmap after that. Thank you, Karthik. Uh, yeah, I'll probably, in the interest of time, I'll just rush through. Uh, we talked about this slide in the morning as well. Um, you know, the, the main point that uh, we need to take from here is chaos is also for uh, QA and developers, right? So the way Litmus is architected is you get a declarative file, a YAML, that's well uh, tested by somebody in your DevOps, and then you can actually go and use it elsewhere, uh, where, wherever you see fit, right? So uh, think of uh, chaos testing spreading across DevOps, and uh, there is incremental feedback being built, either shift left or shift right into that, right? So that's, that's probably uh, one of the things that I wanted to share. And uh, you can uh, throw uh, into game days or CI pipelines or CD pipelines. And one of the most common things that we have seen happening in Litmus is that being used uh, along with GitOps, right? People uh, trigger chaos as a task of um, you know, deployment happening um, as part of your CD, CD pipeline. So you, you can easily automate it, uh, either using Argo CD or Spinnaker or Flux. It works with, uh, uh, it's been tested by community and uh, uh, you know, proven to work with uh, most of the CD platforms as well. So uh, some of the other things that uh, we have seen Litmus being used uh, is also to test observability. You have invested uh, in your observability systems and you don't know whether something goes wrong, your observability system works well or not, right? So you can actually introduce chaos uh, and uh, see whether you are getting the right alerts or your people responding to 
your, uh, you know, uh, setup practices uh, uh, to such chaos or not, right? Um, we're also seeing people testing it, uh, Kubernetes itself. Kubernetes keeps changing uh, all the time, right? So when you upgrade your Kubernetes stacks, can you actually uh, verify your entire application against uh, possible failures happening in Kubernetes itself? For example, when a kubelet service goes down, you know, or, or you set up for uh, a proper uh, service redundancy or not. And we are also seeing um, Kubernetes being used as a cross-cloud control plane, and you're bringing in a lot of uh, infrastructure into new infrastructure into the consideration. So when such infrastructure fails, how does your service work, right? So how can you inject failures into uh, some of um, the cross-cloud cross -cloud control plane? And then we are also seeing, um, you know, Kubernetes deployments are always hybrid in nature. There is some stack that is not Kubernetes underneath. So uh, what happens to your service when failures happen under such stack? We're also seeing people taking chaos all the way to your well-defined services, such as, uh, you know, uh, Amazon RDS or other data services. Can you actually simulate chaos against such services and see whether your services are reliable or not? So these are some of the advanced use cases of chaos that people are seeing, but you always start with some simple use cases such as pod deletes and then you know go further from there. So with that, let me give back to uh, Kartik, uh, you know, to talk about the roadmap and then the, how to how to contribute to Litmus. Yeah, I think some of the roadmap that you're going to see now is driven by all these new use cases that Tuma spoke about. So obviously, we are looking at um, a hybrid set of targets. The, the Kubernetes targets, of course, uh, were the ones that were initially added. We are looking at more experiments that can also uh, target infrastructure um, resources. Better UX um, for the chaos workflow management. By, by this, we mean how can you construct a workflow in a very seamless way and execute it and visualize it. Improved operations support around chaos engineering. Whenever you execute a chaos scenario, there are a few things around it. Where do you want your results to go? Do you want an artifact uh, a sync that, that you want configured? Maybe you're running a load test along with a chaos um, experiment as part of your chaos experiment along with your faults. So you want to see how the results of that benchmark really came. So you want to push it somewhere. How do you ensure that the users on the platform have the right set of permissions um, and they are restricted in what kind of actions or faults they can do on your system? That's the RBAC. And probes here is the ability to do advanced um, hypothesis validation. So there are a few probes today, the scheme of which is getting continuously refined and new probe types are getting added. And of course, integrations with um, CNCF, other CNCF projects in the areas of observability at CI, CD, and just to achieve the overall chaos uh, agenda. Um, contributing to Litmus, I'll probably let Udit pitch in. Uh, we have various areas that probably need the, the contribution. So I'll just let him talk through that for a few minutes. Yeah, you can contribute uh, on a different a different areas in Litmus. You can contribute a whole experiment itself, and there are other components. We'll shortly discuss about that. So, what do you need to have uh, before contributing to Litmus? You need to have an ID8. You need to have a chaos injection logic. Uh, what pre and post chaos checks you are going to perform, and uh, how will you regain the stage after the chaos is completed. Then the sex, ne ne uh, second step comes is fill, fill in the attributes file. You will have some attributes file uh, that we need to fill to uh, run an experiment to prepare a, work, uh, to prepare a co uh, code completion of the experiment. Now when you fill the attribute file, you will generate an experiment uh, scaffolding that will have all the functions that are required to inject the chaos to perform some pre and post chaos checks. Once this uh, scaffolding is done, you will have a business logic. You will have some business logic. Let, let's suppose you are running some pod delete chaos, then your business logic is deleting a pod. So that business logic you need to integrate with the functions. After that, the next step comes is testing in the job. Now once you have all these uh, business logic created, you can just dockerize it. You can run some jobs and validate whether your, what, your, your hypothesis is getting uh, successful or not. You are getting the pod deleted and recovered or not. 
once everything is done, now you will provide some metadata to the experiments that will tell about uh, what the experiment does, some more detailing, and then you can simply add it to, um, commit it to Chaos Hub. And it will be publicly available to Litmus Chaos Hub. Now the other areas where you can contribute is some, uh, as we discussed, like the new experiments you can already con uh, contribute. Now you will have, you, ca you can improve faults. It must today have more than 50 chaos experiments. They are all having uh, different, different, uh, different features. They have different tunables. You can always go and add some few features in that. You will find all these in the issues. Good fuzz issues are already created there. You will have some UI UX bugs that you can fix, or you fe feel something that you can add on. You can go ahead and add. There are a lot of uh, E2E test cases that you, that you can write. As of today, we have uh, pipelines associated for each of the experiments some unit test cases you, that you can add for the code. You will have the Helm charts. Helm charts are there for Litmus installation. You can add some test cases around it. You, will, you can add some documentations. You see if something is not working, you can just go ahead and add the documentation fixes for that. You will have some, you can add your own use cases. You have some observability integrations you can add. You have some CI/CD integration you can add. So all, all these are the other fields than experiments that you can basically use. Now, uh, to, uh, to contact our developers to discuss different topics, you can just log into Litmus Dev channel, Slack channel. It is present in Kubernetes Slack workspace. Uh, and you can also join us on uh, Litmus uh, GitHub issues, and you can see all the issues which you want to uh, address. There are, uh, you can also share your feedbacks, that's very useful, and uh, raise issues. Raise issues for discussion for all these uh, queries. You, we are all also available on Slack, as I mentioned. We are on community sync ups. You can come and uh, have your ideas there. We are also available in office hours. Uh, these all, uh, you can join these meetings. If you have some demos, if you want to contribute, you want to talk more about it, please join and uh, share your experience there. With this, I would like to give the mic to Sayam for uh, giving a use case. Yeah, so, so basically, uh, now we know how and what Litmus does, what are some of its benefits, and how you can use it. But let's see how we at Sivo uh, kind of uses Litmus and what are our plans to even expand it further. So Sivo uh, is a Kubernetes provider, Kubernetes service provider based on K3S. So we provide managed Kubernetes, which is based on K3S. And how do we do that? Uh, we have our supercluster, and our supercluster is, ha is having Kubernetes, the K8s as a base. On top of it, we have the kubevert layer. And on top of that kubevert layer, we have the tenant clusters that basically you, when you log into CEO and you create the cluster, so you will be having the tenant clusters. So when we talk about the tenant clusters, the tenant clusters are having the complete control, um, and they can run untrusted and unsecure workloads. So we don't have control over that. But at the supercluster level, for us, it is important to check the resiliency of our microservices, to check the performance of our microservices that we are running internally. For that, we have Litmus, uh, which is installed. So why Kiosk Engineering for Sivo is the first question that I'm answering. So it, it becomes important for us to test all the resiliency of our infrastructure, of our microservices, which are running uh, on our supercluster. And for that, we have Litmus. And now, how do we do it? Um, and how do we do it continuously? Because it's very important that you keep running your chaos as well. So we have um, chaos implemented on our staging environment, and we have created workflows that we keep on running in a continuous manner. And those workflows are like different types of chaos experiments which are there, node level experiments, pod level experiments, core DNS service, if it goes down, what, what, what will be the impact? We have to target those because we are a cloud platform, and if anything goes wrong, we, we need to kind of um, you know, think from the perspective if any bad actors or bad people would be attacking, then it would be good for us if we can find the issues beforehand and fix it, rather than wait for anything to happen, and then we investigate what is happening. So we can create multiple uh, chaos, like 
Karthik and uh, Uma and Udit, they mentioned. There can be like bring your chaos experiments, multiple uh, chaos scenarios that we can create uh, so that we can think from those perspective what maximum bad we can do to our super cluster and we can save it from anything that will be happening in production. Uh, the next point that I want to cover is minimizing the blast radius. That is very important when you are doing chaos engineering uh, because as a cloud platform, we cannot uh, you know, just kill anybody's pod or kill anybody's cluster. It has to be resilient. So uh, we run it as of now in our staging environment, which is a complete replica of our production environment in a continuous manner. What we want, do want to achieve next is uh, to run it continuously, like it already has the CI, CD integrations and stuff like that. So in order, like a new feature is developed. Uh, so it will run all the existing workflows which are there. And if all the workflows are completed successfully and they, they like passes all the checks, then that particular feature is pushed to production. So I think that, that continuous manner and moving from staging pro to production using the chaos experiments would, would complete the story. Now, uh, now I talked like this is the production supercluster and this is the tenant cluster which is there and uh, Litmus can be installed. So how how this is happening? So on staging we run network chaos, pod chaos, latency and latency and core services chaos. On we also give something to the customers. So uh, like I told you, we uh, customers have full control over their clusters, but we have something called marketplace. And in marketplace, we have litmus from the maintainers. So it is a maintainer maintained application that is there that a user can install on their cluster and perform similar experiments. So we use on our super cluster and we give our users as well the litmus to be installed on their Kubernetes clusters, which is running on our platform to perform chaos experiments on their cluster so that they can also um, do the same pattern of in a continuous manner, uh, make sure their services and their workloads are running fine, resilient, and yep, I think that's those are some of the areas uh, that I wanted to cover, like why chaos engineering is important and how to kind of use it and what would be to minimize the blast radius and how we give it to our customers. So that's what we do at Sego. With that, I think um, I would give to Uma. Yeah, I think we're good. That's all we wanted to share in this brief time of 30 minutes. So we are definitely expecting uh, more feedback to come in. Chaos is, is becoming commonplace in DevOps. Uh, so feel free to uh, take a look at Litmus, uh, start slow, uh, you know, uh, move fast uh, once you're convinced that Chaos actually is going to help you. And we are always available uh, to take more feedback from community. So if there are any questions that uh, we can answer here, uh, we'll be happy to. Um, yeah. As we say, we give license to chaos, right? So you can you can now uh, use Litmus and then you know, play around and see. Uh, don't don't believe what somebody else says. Just see it for yourself. Break something and see. You know, you get a call from somebody else or not. Well, thank you. We are available on the Litmus channel, Litmus Dev channel uh, for contributors. Uh, so we are looking forward to uh, you know, seeing some of you there. Thank you. <laughs>